On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a killer adjuster resume. Are you looking for an IA firm where you're not just another number? Let me tell you about our sponsor, CCMS and Associates. CCMS has been called a big mom and pop firm because they care about their adjusters. They also care about results. The CCMS family is dedicated to training and developing a talented adjusting team. If you would like to be a part of their family, email your resume and cover letter and introduce yourself directly to careers at ccmsclaims.com. Hey IAs, it's Chris Stanley of IA Path. You know how most new adjusters cannot break into the industry? They struggle because companies have two to five years worth of experience as a requirement. And how can they get that experience? But don't worry, at IPATH, we get that experience waived with our 90-day online mentorship program. If you're interested, head over to IPATH.com. I wanted to show you the claim resume method. Here's how we're going to deal with the applicant tracking system. All right, your number one enemy when it comes to a resume is an ATS, or applicant tracking system. Hiring companies large IA firms, insurance carriers, they all use programs to sort out the resumes. And if you're just submitting your resume to a computer, odds are you're gonna be put to the bottom. So we're gonna walk you through how to beat that system with our very own methodology. We call it the claim resume method. All right, the applicant tracking system, when you submit your resume to it, it's searching, kind of like Google searches web pages for keywords. The applicant tracking system is searching your resume going, is this the right fit? Is this the type of person they're wanting to hire for this position? So if you don't have the right things on your resume, if you don't have it in the right format, if it's not the right length, the ATS throws you away. Now, when a person reviews your resume, they often only look at it for six seconds. So here's how we're gonna deal with that ATS system and the six second scanning recruiter. I call it the claim resume method. We're not gonna do anything fancy here on a resume. We're just running the ball right up the middle so we can get an interview because ultimately that's what we want. So first off, we're not here to win an art contest with our resume. We're going to beat the ATS and the scanner with a straight forward resume. There's an infinite number of options and schools of thoughts when it comes to how to craft your resume. To keep you though on the straight and narrow, we're gonna use the claim resume method as a guide. So claim method represents C, customize your resume for each job. L, the length of your resume should be one page. A, arrange your skills. I, be intentional and consistent. And M, make it perfect. So C, customize your resume for each job. You know how we talked about the ATS system is like Google. It's looking for matches in the keywords of your resume. Well, those systems are designed to look at the job posting that a company has put up and find candidates that most closely reflect that. Now this gives us a huge advantage because if we're willing to customize our resume to match the job, we're submitting for, we are in front now. Also, remember, this resume is basically an advertisement of you selling yourself to a potential employer. We wanna customize the ad to this potential buyer. Not all customers have the same wants, needs, and desires, and advertisers know this. That's why they speak to different problems, pain points, or features of a product that will excite the potential customer they're talking to. Now, the great thing is we don't have to guess at what the company wants to see on a resume. They're telling us exactly what they're looking for in their job posting. Now, repeatedly during interviews with hiring managers that I talked with, they remarked, all people need to do is read the job posting, use the keywords. So let's listen and find the keywords and use them. Now, disclaimer here, I, 
I hate to even have to mention this, but I'm not saying you should lie on your resume about your experience or abilities. Recruiters and interviewers will see through that. What I'm saying is to customize how you talk about your experience and skills to better match their keywords. We don't lie if we wanna work in insurance. Save that for the politicians. Now let's look at an example of how we might be able to customize our resume based on a job posting I just pulled up from indeed.com. They list that you need to be able to review the loss, coverages, and other documents to be able to determine coverages. Based on this, we could make sure that we mention understanding of policy or guidelines under a previous experience or in our summary. Now this job posting also mentions communication is important. So have you ever had to communicate to clients or other personnel in a previous job? My guess is yes. Make sure you mention it and use the word communication. Ever had to deal with litigation or negotiation? Looks like based on this posting, that might be an important qualification to make sure you highlight. Now they also mentioned the ability to handle complex situations. When you worked at a warehouse in Baghdad, did you have to navigate complex political situations? I'm sure you did. Finally, they mention Xactimate in this job posting. Now this tells us what? Even if you're familiar with other software programs, they don't really care. So no one cares if you're proficient in the auto estimating software of CCC1 or Auditex. It's not that relevant to this posting. It may still make the resume, but it isn't primary. Oh, you know Symbility? <laughs> not interested. They need someone who knows Xactimate. By looking at the job posting and crafting our resume, we can present the keywords that the ATS is looking for. And that is why we customize our resume for each job. This shouldn't be a massive change to your resume, just some simple tweaks to the way you talk about yourself. Since we're just applying for entry-level insurance adjuster or independent adjuster jobs, it should be fairly similar but we're going to craft our resume in a way that highlights what they want, how we can give it to them and leave out what isn't relevant. As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. We're writing estimates, climbing ladders, walking on roofs and mistakes can happen. What are you going to do when something goes wrong? Kaplik it. CPLIC or Kaplik for short is an insurance company for independent adjusters formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise. If you want help understanding what coverages you need as an independent adjuster, head over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV for a free download that will explain the common types of insurance for adjusters. Now L, length, let's talk about the length. Before you go whipping one of the latest, greatest resume books at me, showing me where it says you need to have a two-page resume, I'm telling you, it's one page. So hear me out. Since you're watching this video, you're likely trying to get a first-time position or entrance into the independent adjuster industry. Now, you may have tons of experience in other fields, but no perfectly relatable experience to the field of insurance adjusting. A two-page resume is for someone with 10 plus years in an industry. After 10 plus years and holding multiple jobs in the industry, you may consider doing two pages. But for now, we just do one page. Also, as I interviewed hiring managers and recruiters for insurance companies, we asked them the question, perfect adjuster resume, one page or two? The resounding answer was, one page. So let's give people what they want. With us having to put everything we want to say on one page, choosing what goes on the resume and what doesn't becomes super important. A, arrange your skills. Arranging your skills is what is likely going to take you the most time on your resume. This is where you will craft what skills you have demonstrated in your career through bullet points under the respective jobs. The bullet points under your job history or education, if you have less than five years in the workforce, should be no more than 15 bullet points. We only have one page, so make it count with each bullet. 
we'll use most of our bullet points for jobs we've held in the last five years. Typically, five bullet points for the last job you've held, three for each other job in the last five years, then one bullet point for each job that was over five years ago. For jobs that were 15 years ago, they don't need to be listed unless they have relatable experience to adjusting. For those, we still only give one bullet point. Your future employer is mainly interested in your most recent work. Now let's talk about bullet points for a second. You ever seen a movie with a silver bullet? There's usually some monster that needs defeated and there's only one bullet that can do it, the silver bullet. Our bullet points need to be viewed like this. The insurance company or IA firm has needs and wants from you as a job applicant and they listed it in the job posting. It's our job to create a silver bullet that takes out as many of these monsters as we can. There are a few ingredients each bullet needs to have. First off, keyword. Find the keyword or want in the job posting you can take out with this bullet. Number two, you gotta find an impact. What impact on a company or accomplishment have you had in the past to prove this bullet point? And three, include numbers. Quantify your impact of your accomplishment. What result did the company you worked for receive? Quantify it. Remember, we talked about a job posting earlier. Now let's craft a silver bullet to eliminate some of those examples we talked about. Maybe you worked at a doctor's office. You scheduled patients, collected insurance paperwork, and created files around the office. We could customize and arrange our skills with this silver bullet. Keyword, communication. Accomplishment, increased show up rates of patients. By how much? Using numbers, 25%, which equaled $120,000 in additional revenue. When we put three ingredients together like this, we get this silver bullet. Oversaw and improved communication with patients and increased show up rate by 25% resulting in an additional $120,000 in revenue for the company. The importance of numbers cannot be overstated. You must, you must include numbers. And you might feel it's impossible to quantify your impact on a company, but it isn't. Guesstimate if you must, but try your hardest to make it accurate and arrange your skills to be as many silver bullets as you can make to best match the job posting. Let's talk about I, being intentional and consistent. This is likely the most important part of this entire video about resumes. You must be intentional and consistent on your resume. If you make one typo, you may be forgiven, but two, and you'll be thrown to the side and still be looking for a new job. The number one complaint from most hiring managers and recruiters that we interviewed is a sloppy or incomplete resume. We want to make sure we are dress right dress. Let's talk about a few things though that we can do to stay intentional and consistent on our resume. First off, fonts. When working on your resume, use a font that is universal, plain, and easy to read. I personally like the way Arial looks on a resume, but make sure you stick to one font throughout your resume and make it a universal one. Some popular ones are Calibri, Georgia, and Cambria. Remember, this isn't a beauty contest. The goal of the font is to make it easy to read. Also, many computer systems, those ATSs, mess up the fonts if it isn't a traditional font, so stick to the basics. Headers. When doing headers, you want to make sure there's a logical progression. The biggest header, your name, should be bigger than anything else. Use the same size headers across the resume for everything else and it'll make it feel consistent and clean. Now, I have some recommendations for header sizes, but this is going to change depending on how it needs to fit on your resume because it's all going to be on one page. For your name, use 20 size font. That's the biggest heading. Uh, for the other section headers, use 14, and for all other text, use 13. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love writing along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Myself and a growing list of industry experts will show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know it's hard to find a working adjuster who's going to let you shadow them, which is why we let you write along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at iPath.com 
slash TV. Now let's talk about M, making it perfect. This sounds simple, but it's so hard. Making sure your resume is perfect is always a challenge. That is why most people never make it to an interview. They mess something up. It is said that recruiters and hiring managers may overlook one mistake. One mistake is viewed as an accident. Two is being sloppy. Three is unforgivable. So spend time going through and reviewing your resume line by line. Now here's a few tips to ensure your resume is rock solid. Use spell check and Grammarly. Grammarly is an online grammar checker. It far exceeds Microsoft Word spell checker and it'll help you make sure every word and comma are properly placed. One misspelling will often disqualify you from a job. Check all headers. Double check that all your headings are the same size and font. We need this to be consistent. Check your spacing. Spacing that isn't consistent is wrong. It doesn't take much to make your resume look weird or sloppy. Stick to simple spacing and again, do it the same all over the resume. Make sure every sentence is spaced the same with either a single or a double space, your choice. Check for periods. Don't forget your periods, period. Use present tense with your current job. Now this is huge. When writing about yourself, write in the present tense. Don't write placed in the top five sellers of the nation. Instead, write it in the present tense, consistently placing in the top five sellers of the nation. Check all bullet point sizes. One mistake that is easy to make is bullet sizes. Make sure they're all the same size. This goes back to the consistency piece, but check it. Now, if you need additional ideas for your resume or additional help, John Bachman and I wrote a book called The Adjuster's Resume Playbook. In that book, we walk you through exactly how to do your resume line by line. We walk you through how to craft each bullet, how to do each header and exactly how to craft your summary so you can beat the ATS. You can find the adjuster's resume playbook on Amazon or by heading to iapath.com slash books. My name is Chris Stanley and we at iapath are dedicated to giving you actionable advice on how to have an amazing adjusting career that will help you break into the insurance industry so you can obtain freedom in your career and life. If you need help learning how to get work, head over to iPath.com and click the How to Find Work button. We'll send you a free video course that shares insider tips on how to get started. And until next week, keep walking your path and claiming your life.